dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Proudly We Hail, starring Wayne Morris in Once Upon an Elephant, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your own favorite motion picture personalities join us in plays we know that you'll enjoy. Our star is the popular actor Wayne Morris, and the title of our play, A Comedy Romance, Once Upon an Elephant. We'll have the curtain for Act One in a moment, but first, this important message from our announcer. Looking for a career as an executive in aviation, the United States Air Force is selecting a limited number of young college men and women to prepare them for important non-flying jobs as officers in administrative and technical fields. Fields such as management, communications, research, and air transport you'll get six months of training at Air Force Officer Candidate School. Learn how you can qualify. Get details at your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Once Upon an Elephant, starring Wayne Morris as Corey Wainwright. <laughs> Every now and then, the unusual happens to all of us. But a little more than the unusual happened to our hero, Corey Wainwright. Well, Corey is a bus driver, and a good one, too. I mean, he's very conscientious about his job, that of keeping his schedule on time so that his customers won't be late for work. Corey's trip begins at 5.30 in the morning, and he doesn't pick up anyone until the third stop. But this morning, he didn't pick up any passengers, because right in the middle of the street, after he passed the second stop, was an obstruction. An elephant, no less. An elephant and a rider. He wanted to pass, so he gave the horn a couple of honks. Oh, please don't do that. Please. What's going on here? Hey, get that animal out of the way. Oh, please, Bassford, you can't just stand here forever. Bassford? That's a silly name for an animal. It's not silly at all. It's sentimental. He's named after a football player I once knew. There's a striking resemblance above the eyebrows and across the backfield. Well, that's very interesting, but it's 5.33 in the morning. I have a watch, thank you. I was telling the elephant. He has no conception of time. Well, I have, and I happen to be two minutes late already, so if you'll just remove your, your, uh, your pet from the premises, I'll get underway. I wish I could. What? Yeah. You mean to say he's stuck there? I mean he won't budge. But, well, aren't there some special words you can say? Like... I've said them all, and some others besides. Oh, Bassford, please stop being such a problem mammal. Maybe if you spoke to oh, me... Oh, no, then... you don't. I got my own troubles. Well, that's a very unchivalrous attitude to take. Why didn't I think of this four minutes ago? Oh, then you will help me. All I've got to do is back up and drive down the next street. I bid you good morning. Oh, but you can't leave me alone with this, this, this pachyderm delinquent. Why, there may not be anyone else along for hours. You won't be alone long. In about, in, in exactly five minutes, a patrol car cruises by here and the you can tell... The police? Well, at, at least will you telephone my lawyer for me? I have his card somewhere in my purse. Well, well I guess I can do that much for you. Looks like you're going to need him. You didn't by any chance happen to steal, Bassford. Certainly not. Of course I didn't steal him, as if I could. How dare you even suggest such a thing? Where's the card? Well, here it is. I'm bending down as far as I can without falling off. Uh, can you come a little closer? Is it safe? That's right. Just a little nearer. Bassford, pick him up. Hey, hey, get that elephant away oh, from me. He hey, his truck is around me. Hey, put me down. Put me down. Put me down. Well, hello. Hello. Oh, isn't this better? Much cozier. Now we won't have to shout at one another. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Well, I'll have to ask you to stop squirming. You're making Bassford nervous. I'm making him nervous. 
I know what you're thinking. That it was a low, contemptible trick the way I got you up here. But when you mentioned the police, I... Then you're dead stealing. Do I look like an elephant thief? You look like... I did the first thing that came to my mind. I honestly didn't know if he'd pick you up or not. Now you know. Now we all know. Are you angry? Oh, no. I was afraid you might be. After all, I'm only seven minutes behind schedule. hundred people will be late for their jobs, and I'll probably be without one myself tonight because the supervisor is never going to believe a thing like this. That's exactly why you should appreciate my predicament. You have your supervisor to convince, and I have the police. Mm-hmm. Nice, Basford. How about returning me to the ground, huh? Nice animal. Now, get me down from here, you dumb dodo. What an ugly way to speak to Bass, but you've probably hurt his feelings. It may take him years to forget because he has a memory like a human being. All right, all right, you win. What do you want? To tell you Bassford's in my story, and and if it makes sense to you... Well, up to this point, it hasn't. I'm afraid that's precisely the viewpoint the police will take. Well, to begin with, my name is Tony Latimer. Well, mine's Corey Wainwright. Does Bassford have a last name? Oh, no, elephants never do. Well, in a way, Basford does. In the circus, he was billed as Basford, the king of trained mammals. Mm-hmm. Whose circus? My father's. The Latimer One Ring Circus and Animal Show. Two performances daily. Except we never seem to have any audiences. And then one day, they came. Who? The creditors. Oh, oh. This isn't going to be one of those mortgage on the old tent routines, is it? Oh, not just the tent, the costumes, the cages, the animals in the cages, everything, even the sawdust. Now, look, I may be gullible. There you go, doubting me already, and I've just begun. You mean there's more? There was an auction. It was a ghastly nightmare. I could hardly bear to stand by and watch total strangers take away everything, piece by piece, animal by animal. Go on. Bassford was the last to be bid on. Some horrible men from a logging camp bought him to use for dragging heavy timber around. I protested the sale. I tried to convince them that Basford wasn't suited for that kind of work, that he was more the... Yeah, the uh, intellectual type. You're as insufferable as they were. You think that just because Basford is big and has thick skin and a low forehead, he isn't capable of anything except manual labor. Well, is he? He's talented and sensitive. A real artist. Last night when I went to say goodbye to him... Our final farewell. I could sense how crushed he was. His eyes were filled with pain and reproach. He seemed to be pleading with me to help him. What did he say? Don't let them take me to that dreadful place. Don't let them. Basford said that? Well, he, he seemed to be saying that. And suddenly I knew I had to put up a fight for him. Suddenly I, I seemed to have a purpose in life. A standard to bear a slogan. Uh, to... A slogan like, do not trample on the under-elephant. Oh, you do understand. Yeah. Then you'll also understand why I kidnapped him very early this morning. I'm trying to get him to the zoo where he'll be among his own kind. He'll be happy there. Instead of being just an ordinary beast of burden, he can do tricks for the children. And he'll always be proud and never have to hang his trunk in shame. He owes you a great deal. It's nothing, really. The very least he can do is come and see you every visiting day. What do you mean? Well, I, I mean the police will call this grand larceny. They, they, they send me to jail for just trying to help Bassford? Well, I'm afraid that they'll say he's big enough to take care of himself. Oh, but he isn't. And if they weren't so calloused and insensitive, they'd understand. You'd understand. But all you think about is time schedules and getting people from one place to another. You're not human. You're, you're a robot. And all day long, you keep repeating... Can a robot do this? Have your fares ready, please. Or this? Keep moving to the back of the bus, please. Or this? Oh, leave by the rear exit, please. Oh, you're wonderful. I used to hear only bells when I was kids, but you made me hear sirens. Oh, please do it again. Look, we got to get Basford out of here. We'll find a place to hide him. Well, tell him to start moving. No, I've decided to face it. You don't seem to understand. That's the police. They'll be here in a minute. How can you explain this? There isn't time to think up anything. We're trapped. Oh, that awful noise has upset Bess, but he's beginning to sway and rock to and fro. Yeah, well, well, well t tell him to stop it. Tell us I'm, I'm slipping. I can't hold on any longer. <laughs> Basford, you bad elephant. 
Clint. What's going on here? Oh, officer, I'm so glad you've arrived. My friend's just had a bad spill. I wonder if you'll see if he's still breathing. Oh, he is. Oh, thank goodness. Now, officer, my name's Tony Latimer, and I have... Officer, a... this woman is a minister of society. I demand that you arrest her. I thought I recognized There's you. There's no doubt that she should be arrested. On what charge? Well, uh... Well, there must be some law she's violating... Book her for driving an elephant without a license. She has a special permit from the chief, which is just as good. Whose bus is that? Mine. What's it doing parked in the middle of the street, tying up traffic? There hasn't been any traffic. Oh, that's right, officer. Nevertheless, I'll have to give you a ticket. What? Oh, resisting an officer, eh? Oh, if now, that anyone be... deserves a ticket, officer, it's I. I was having great trouble with Bassford, and Corey, uh, Mr. Wainwright, was kind enough to offer to help me. When you drove up, we were just ready to leave. Well, see that you do at once. Goodbye, officer. Give my regards to the chief. You heard what the officer said. Get that animal moving. Oh, but first I've got to tell you the truth. You wouldn't recognize the truth if it was as plain as... as, uh, Basford. Oh, but you simply don't under... Put me down, Basford. (laughs) Wait a minute, Corey, please. Do you think it was easy to make up a story like that? Oh, please hear me out. At an early age, I fell out of a tree and landed on... On your head, obviously. My acrophobiac complex. Where is that? Well, it isn't anywhere. It's a fear of high places. I was supposed to outgrow it, but instead it got worse until finally I was afraid to even step off a curb. Lady, you need to see a psychiatrist. I did, almost a month ago. This is the way he's curing me. Oh, you're better now. Oh, much better. Almost well again. He's really quite wonderful. He found out that I love animals, and so he prescribed riding tall ones to overcome my fear. I began with a horse, then last week it was a camel, this week it's Bassford, and next week it's going to be... Don't tell me. Let me guess. Let's see, uh, giraffe. That's right. Darling, you must have been to the same psychiatrist. No, but you'd better give me his name. I may need him any minute. Oh, but darling, you're perfectly all right. I like you just the way you are. And in fact, Miss I... Miss Latimer, yes? if that is your name... It really is. Apparently, you take me for a complete fool. Certainly, you've made me act like one, and I'm fed up. So kindly do me a favor. Anything, Corey, darling. Get out of my bus and out of my life. You're very rude. Oh, you Bassford. Look, he's beginning to move. Bassford! Oh, dear, he can't hear me. We'll have to chase him in the bus. Well, didn't you hear me? We'll have to try to get... Mr. Latimer, I'm not an elephant catcher. But he's getting away. Then I suggest you start after him. On foot. Now. You mean you won't help me? You understand me perfectly. Very well. But you may be extremely sorry you didn't cooperate. Oh, bastard, wait for me. Wait for me. We pause briefly from our story, Once Upon an Elephant, starring Wayne Morris, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know of one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. The curtain rises on Act Two of Once Upon an Elephant, starring Wayne Morris as Corey Wainwright. Well, Corey was certainly glad to get rid of the elephant and all that. That little episode with the circus had been nothing but trouble, from a business standpoint, that is. He was 12 minutes late and behind schedule all the rest of the day. A lot of passengers were sore and made ugly remarks about the service, and Corey made a few in return. 
When he finally drove into the garage in the late afternoon, the supervisor was waiting to see him. So Corey told him the truth. When he was finished, the supervisor gave Corey one of those I wasn't born yesterday looks and said, Now, honestly, Wainwright, does a story like that make sense to you? No. Then why waste my time telling it? Because it happened just the way I said. I've heard some fancy alibis, but an elephant, acrophobia, auctions, a circus. I never heard so... And furthermore, we've had some complaints from the passengers on your route this morning. What kind of an excuse have you got for that? And be careful what you say. Well, you know how it is. I was trying to make up time, and the bus was overcrowded, and people wouldn't move to the rear, and, well, one word led to another, and... Well, you can't use those kind of words to the customers. There's a rule against it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll have to give you 40 demerits, and... Now, now wait a minute. It wasn't my fault that an elephant and a wacky dame... Plus a three-day layoff. Three days? What kind of... And five more demerits for insubordination. I don't like your attitude. Look, I tell you the truth, and you throw the book at me. What kind of an attitude should I have? Maybe I should say thanks. Well, maybe I have been a bit rough. Huh? I'll tell you what. Yes? If you can substantiate your story, I'll cancel the three-day layoff. What do you mean, substantiate my story? Bring the girl in, and if her version checks with oh, yours... Oh, no, you don't. So there wasn't any girl after all, or an elephant. Look, I'm in this jam from accidentally running into her. You don't think I'd be crazy enough to make an appointment to meet her, do you? That's up to you. Uh, even if I knew how to get in touch with her... It should be worth three days' pay. She may not live here. Forty-five demerits and dock three days or the girl. Hey, look, at how about the cop who saw us, you know? Wouldn't he be okay? Oh, no, no. The police already think we have a lot of crazy drivers without troubling them with something like this. It's got to be... I know. The girl. <laughs> Oh, Tony, darling, only you could get yourself in such a situation. But, Marion, unless I do research work, how can I write my book, 20 Unique Ways to Win a Husband? Unique is hardly the word. Well, I can't think of a better one. 20 impossible ways to win a husband sounds more appropriate. Oh, darling, be serious. I'm really quite concerned about this. Well, then why didn't you take him into your confidence? Nothing is so simple as the truth. Well, that would have spoiled everything. And everything is fine this way? Aren't we getting off the subject? I don't know. What is the subject? That a girl must use imagination to capture a man. That's the entire theme of my book. That's why I'm doing all these experiments. But, Tony, darling, you're confusing imagination with... Now, take, for instance, a twelfth way, where you advise girls to rent a helicopter and hover over their boyfriend's houses singing the... the You've Got Me Up in the Air Over You blues. Do you remember what happened to you when you tried that one out? Yes. Fortunately, I was wearing a parachute. Mm-hmm. Fortunately. And this newest experiment may have some repercussions, too. Oh, no. Everything was taken care of. Nothing can happen. The police gave me a permit. I was thinking about the bus driver. <sighs> I've been thinking about him, too. But, darling, a bus driver. Why, they're like, like, uh, like barbers or bartenders. And you may have need for their services, but you don't become romantically interested in them. What a ridiculous comparison. I neither drink nor shave. And yesterday was the first time I was ever on a bus. And I wasn't really on it. He threw me off. All this and muscles, too. Lovely ones. Mm. And shoulders. Oh, and the way he kisses. Tony, a salesman never uses the product he sells. The what? You're beginning to act and sound as if you believe the stuff you're writing. My only interest in this kind of research is to prove how important imagination is to romance. But you haven't proved it. At least not this time. And you won't prove it unless he gets in touch with you. I know. Which I doubt very much that he will. Oh, he must. Uh, so that I can prove the 14th way is practical. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll get it. Oh, wait a minute. What's wrong? Suppose it's Corey. Well, fine. Isn't that what you want? Look, if it is, Corey, I'll not only buy 20 copies of your book when it's finished, but I'll try all 20 ways. Oh, of course it couldn't be, Corey. Oh, all right, see who it is. Thanks. Oh, hello. You're Corey Wainwright, aren't you? Yes. Do you ride my bus? No, but I'm going to sell my car immediately. Won't you come in? Uh, you did come to see Tony, didn't you? Yes. Hello, Miss Latimer. Hello. I came to ask uh, you... If... Goodbye. I'll see you later, Tony. Where are you going? Out to rent a helicopter and take some singing lessons, too. Uh, she's joking, of course. Oh, oh, I thought maybe you were exchanging a message in code. Won't, won't you sit down? Thanks. It, it was nice of you to look me up. It was uh, quite a job finding you. But you felt impelled to keep on searching. Yes, I... I think uh... that's very sweet. 
particularly after the way we parted. I apologize for acting like a, a bus driver. And I apologize for myself and Basford. We were very rude. Is he all right? Oh, he's fine. Oh, do you have any trouble with him? Oh, quite a lot, but that really isn't important. Or did you come to discuss Basford? Oh, I came because yes, I wanted to... Yes, Corey? Uh, I need you very much. Oh, Corey, darling. I realize our meeting was strange and unusual. Well, one might but... even say unique. And I'm not sure I have the right to call on you oh, for I would have been very depressed if you hadn't. Uh, you know, people don't usually meet that way. Yes, it wasn't in the least routine. Why, if we told people how we became acquainted... They, they might not even believe us. Only know. very dull, unimaginative. They people. might even say that it didn't happen. We don't care what they say. Of course, we know it did. And that's really all that's important. Except this. Mm. Now, now, that's unfair. You shouldn't have done it. It isn't what I had in mind at all. I know. I should be making some notes myself. What do you what mean? What do you mean? Just what did you have in mind? What did you mean you should be making some notes? You did come to make love to me, didn't you? Look, let's start all over. To tell me that I'm the only really different girl you ever met? Now, uh, just a minute. That I... our meeting was the biggest thing in your life? If you'll only let me... And that we love see. each other and want to get married? Can I say just but one... But I must be completely honest with you, Corey. I have to tell you the truth about how we happened to meet. Oh, surely we're not going to go through that routine again. You see, I'm writing a book to prove that marriage is boring because the courtship is dull, that it needs imagination. Which you have an overabundance. So. And you were an experiment, the 14th way, the 14th unique way for a girl to win a husband. Of course, when it started out, you were just a part of the research I had to do. But well, after you kissed me on Basford, it, it was different. I'm glad you're the only experiment that worked out. I'm, uh, I'm afraid, Miss Latimer, that you'll have to do some more research. I don't understand. I came to see you to ask me, ask for a favor. But you said you needed me. I do. The supervisor wouldn't believe it about you and Basford, and he gave me 45 demerits and docked me three days. Yes. Then Go he, on. Then he said if you would verify the story, he'd cancel the three-day layoff. Oh, that's very important, isn't it? To me, yes. Get out. Do you hear me? Get out. I wouldn't lift a finger, not even if you were docked three years. I never want to see you again. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Oh, Corey, wait. Hello. Darling, I'm across the street in the coffee shop. I just saw Corey leave. Is he on his way to get a license? No! Keep moving to the back of the bus, please. Have your fares ready. Leave by the rear exit, please. Lady, you'll have to step a little further inside so I can close the door. Oh, oh, no, not you again. I won't move an inch until you let me explain, until our misunderstanding is straightened out. Is this a plot to make me one of the unemployed? Certainly not. This is the rush hour. If I get behind schedule now, it'll be a permanent vacation. Nonsense. Your supervisor thinks you're the best driver the company has. Uh, he does? I've just seen him and told him all about us and Basket. He even knows how you really feel about me. Yeah? Yeah, what about the demerits? All canceled, and you get a raise. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, if this isn't your imagination again. Oh, kiss me, darling, and say you'll marry me. <laughs> well, I... Uh, For crying out loud, driver, kiss her and say you will so the rest of us can get home sometime tonight. <laughs> The curtain falls on the final act of Once Upon an Elephant. Our star, Wayne Morris, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once for service in the United States Army and United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force today. Or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now back at the microphone, our star, Wayne Morris, and our producer. It's good to have you back with us again, Wayne. It's good to be back, C.P., I'm getting to be a real character on your shows. Why, Wayne, how's that? 
Well, the last time here, I did that atomic comic. <laughs> Sam Cyclotron, the cosmic kid. Yeah. He got involved with snakes, gorillas, shipwrecks, a monsoon, pirates. This time, I'm a bus driver that gets tangled up with an elephant. How do you dream up these parts? Why, that's easy. Now, the next time you join us... Ah, don't us... say it, C.P. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. But seriously, and speaking of parts, they tell me at Warner Brothers, your new picture with Gary Cooper is great. Task Force, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Task Force. It's a story of naval aviation. Should be out pretty soon now. And right down your alley, with a great naval flying record behind you. I wish you'd let me tell uh, our audience no, about no, it. No, no, C.P. Uh-uh. Not even to plug the picture. That war business was a job. Well, we're all mighty proud of the grand job you did. You know, C.P., you're talking about jobs. Did it ever occur to you what fine job opportunities the service offers young men and women these days? Constantly. That's right. You and Wynn Niles are doing that pitch all the time, but it is a fine thing. What else offers better opportunities for young people these days? You're hired. All right. <laughs> I'll come back anytime. Sam Cyclotron, Elephant Boy, anything you say, <laughs> C.P. But right now, Pat and the youngster and I are going to catch up on some of this ocean breezes, maybe some fishing. You're not going traveling again. No, no, just down the coast a bit. I put on a lot of travel this year. Yes, I know. The bond drive trip and the personal appearance tour. I don't blame you for wanting to take it easy for a while. But uh, what's coming up next? Oh, I don't know right now. I'm looking over some scripts. But what's doing with you ne next week, C.P.? Next week, Wayne, and ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful and very talented actress Marie McDonald comes to star in our theater in a dramatic story of suspense and action titled Interrupted Honeymoon. S sounds good, and we'll be listening. And save those elephants for me, will you? So long, C.P. So long, Wayne, and goodbye. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Marie McDonald returns to star in Interrupted Honeymoon. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script was by Ralph Elliott Dickinson. Music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>